Welcome back to the quarterback film room. We're going to take a look at Mitch Leitner again here against Iowa in 2015. Under center right there, he's very fluid in terms of moving and getting the ball out of his hand. This was a game that Mitch was definitely up for as Iowa was a program coming out of high school that um, he he's even said that he, he felt like Iowa strung him along during the recruiting process. So if there's any game that he was ready for, it was this one. Now, Jerry Kill took a likening to Mitch early on when Mitch came in. Obviously, he was recruited by Jerry Kill, and Kill liked the kid. Okay? He liked him so much that he uh, you know, handed him the starting job over Phil Nelson, who was pretty darn good. So, <clears throat> something struck a chord with Kill in terms of Leitner. Right here, he should have hit the running back now in the flat. And that's a recurring theme that I've seen from Mitch Leidner is that he doesn't have great anticipation skills. Anticipation's a, a trait that you can see on film, and it's something that's developed over time. From my experience and my study, it really is developed through playing sports like basketball, passing a, a basketball around, playing point guard, um, you know, just being an all-around athlete as a kid. That's how you can develop anticipation as a thrower. To me, it looks like Mitch is not an innate anticipation thrower, and he doesn't have the elite feel in terms of anticipating windows. Right there, he gets out of the pocket, and, and you know, he forces something down the field. <clears throat> but that's an area of his game that, that he really hasn't shown that he has that mastered at all, um, anticipation. Now, Mitch has a lot of good characteristics or traits about him, though. Okay, Number one, he's a hell of an athlete. He can move, he's big, he's got a cannon of an arm, he's got pretty good mechanics dropping back, and he's got a pretty good throwing motion slash release. Okay, so like I've said before, Mitch checks all the boxes, all the proverbial boxes on this throw, throws from under center play action design, and it's a double move post that he throws early with anticipation. Okay, that's a great throw, a great throw as we see the replay. The receiver is going to run a double move out and post. That was the best receiver that Mitch has ever had at the, at the University of Minnesota. Number one, A.J. May, or K.J. May, rather, from 2015-2014. Uh, He's now in the National Football League. But Mitch was riddled with poor receivers in 2016. New offense. Had a subpar year statistically. But uh, he's still a guy with a high ceiling. The determining factor is going to be, is he going to be adaptable? Meaning, will he be able to, to adapt to a pro-style system, any system that he gets into, master it immediately from a mental standpoint and from an anticipatory standpoint in terms of anticipating windows, having that elite feel as a thrower? I don't know if he's going to be able to do that. Strong arm, accurate for the most part when he sees it right away. When he sees things right away, he's great. But more often than not, his thought process can get muddied in terms of diagnosing coverages, reacting, playing with instincts. It's something that he's going to have to overcome. Here, Mitch is going to throw a seam ball or a curl ball down the seam. He puts it on him. Okay? A little bit too mechanical in the way he threw it right here. Tremendous throw. Touch. The guy's open. Something that was schemed up during the week, but still a great throw by Mitch to throw with touch as we rewind it back. He's going to get the little bit of the half roll here, get out of the pocket, design throwback, touch, release. Nice throw. Let's move further along against Iowa in 2015. We're taking a look at Mitch Leidner. Even on this screen, he has a low release. He doesn't have an elite feel for the defender around him to throw it maybe over him. He just you know, instinctively throws a line drive. And that's okay. But it speaks to the fact he's not a point guard, folks. Mitch Leidner is not a point guard. He's an athlete. He's a mover. He's a strong cat. He's a real strong kid, too. And another point that I wanted to bring up, over the course of his career at Minnesota, he put on some weight. He bulked up, which can be a positive. It can also be a negative because it can affect the way 
the ball comes out of your hand, um, and how you throw the football. Now on this route, Leidner's going to throw this deep over or this crosser. Tremendous throw. Under center, so everything meshes, meshes up better. Throws with anticipation there over a backer. That's a tremendous throw. But notice the route K.J. May runs. He looks inside. He stems vertical. He gets over. So that's K.J. May running an elite route. Leidner still had to throw with touch. <clears throat> Making something out of nothing. A staple of Leidner's game at Minnesota. So he's, he's a guy that's intrigued me, not just because I live in Minneapolis, but because he's a guy that I watched in high school. I saw him coming up at Lakeville South. I was really impressed with him there, and frankly, I was a little bit puzzled as, 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 as to why his throwing mechanics looked worse than they did at Lakeville South as he progressed at the University of Minnesota. Yes, he was putting up great numbers. Jerry Kill and company loved him. He was running the football. He has a cannon. But there was something off in terms of that finer component throwing the football. So he's going to have to prove to NFL scouts that he's a thrower, he's a playmaker, he's a point guard, so to speak, and then see what happens.